Atlanta Falcons are five and eight in second place in the NFC South division. I've told a couple of people in my personal life, to use an MMA analogy, that the Falcons are the fighter that wrestles and, and grounds and pounds. They keep their opponent on the canvas. They punch them, knee them, elbow them, try and choke them out. That's what the Falcons are. The Falcons aren't the fighter that likes to throw spinning elbows and put together two punch or four punch combinations or three punch combinations and then finish it up with a two kick combination. Those types of fighters, <laughs> The teams that throws the spinning elbows and 360 heel kicks and stuff, those teams are the Chiefs, the Bengals, the Bills, hell, even Seattle. The Falcons are the wrestler. They're the wrestler, they're the ground and pound, they're the type of fighter that's going to wear you out and tire you out. And over the past five games, and I'm going to kind of recap the last five games, they have gone away from their style. They try to throw punches and throw leg kicks and try to stand and bang with the other teams. They are more effective when they are running the football. So for example, looking at some of their stats from previous games, week one against New Orleans, the Falcons ran the ball 38 times for a total of 201 yards and two touchdowns. Week two against the Rams, the Atlanta Falcons, if I can fucking find it, ran the ball a total of 27 times for a total of 90 yards. So they didn't really have a huge impact on the ground in that game, I thought, but they ran the ball 27 times total. And Marcus Mariota only threw the ball 26 times. Then we go to Seattle. They ran the ball 31 times, 179 yards, and had two rushing touchdowns. And then fast forward to San Francisco. They ran the ball a total of 40 times, 168 yards, and had one rushing touchdown. So this is their style. Their style is to ground and pound, wear teams out, run the ball, and that's how they've had success throughout the season. Well, over the past few games, like the Chargers, it's in the fourth quarter. The score is tied 17 to 17. The Falcons have a chance to march down the field and milk the clock and kick the potential game-winning field goal. Well, Tyler Algier on first and 10 runs for two yards. Then Marcus Mariota throws an incomplete pass in the left part of the field to Kyle Pitts. Then he throws another incomplete pass to Drake London. So you've deviated from your style that could have won you the game and that you've been accustomed to throughout the season. You've shown people, you've shown other teams that this works for you. So in a crucial moment like this, you go away from what helped you have a shot at winning the division. And then, you know, the Falcons went on to lose that game. The final play of the game for the Falcons when they had a chance to put themselves in front against the Washington Commanders, they're in the red zone and they choose to throw it. Now, it's kind of hard for me to hate the play because Cordell Patterson is right there. They try to throw it underneath the Cordell, and, and if he gets it, it's a touchdown. And I'll cut Marcus Mariota some slack because I believe it was Deron Payne who made a play on the ball. And when stuff like that happens, you just got to give it up to the defense, the defender who, who made a play on the football. That's how I look at it. Marcus made the right throw. He made the right choice. It just unfortunately got deflected, and that happens. Um, Tom Brady had a pass deflected against Cleveland. Now, granted, it wasn't like it was in the fourth quarter and the Bucks had 10 seconds left to score a touchdown and they were in the red zone. It was in the first quarter, but still, that, that happens. Now, as I was watching that drive, what was going through my mind was if they keep running the ball, then if they get stopped, the clock will keep going. Washington will have to burn their timeouts and that'll give them less time for them to march down the field and kick the field goal if Atlanta scores. So it's it it's kind of hard for me to hate on that scenario. Then you go to Pittsburgh and you start off throwing the football and which again is not your strength. Your strength is not to stand and bang with opponents. Your strength is to wrestle, going back to the MMA analogy, is to wrestle and ground and pound knee your opponents, elbow them, punch them right, and wear them out. And you start off the game by having Marcus Mariota throw the football, which is not his strong suit, which I predicted before the season started. So Arthur Smith and the coaching staff have kind of screwed over Atlanta a bit this season. And when you go back and look at these games, they could have easily gone or they could have possibly been at least four and one over the past five games. Four and one. But now you're one and four over the past five games. Marcus Mariota continues to struggle. He's just not that guy. He's just not that guy. I said it before the season started when, when they signed him. I was saying to myself, OK, he's just a guy that is going to be here until they find another franchise quarterback. Hopefully that guy is Ritter. Hopefully Atlanta won't have to wait so long to find another franchise quarterback because franchise quarterbacks are very hard to find. And I was hoping to be wrong. I didn't want to be right about Marcus Mariota struggling. Watching him in Tennessee, he threw the ball, short, quick throws, and I felt as if he was afraid to take shots down the field. And whenever he did take a shot down the field, it wouldn't pan out too well. And this season, watching him throw, he is just 
he has just not been very accurate. His passes have no chance, especially when he's trying to get it to a wide receiver that is well covered and he has to put it to where his receiver can only get it. They have no chance. They're inaccurate. They seem to always go at the same speed. He doesn't really put any touch on his passes and he still struggles at throwing the deep ball. His deep balls have no chance. They're always in front, way too in front of the wide receiver. And the only time he'll make a pass is if the guy is wide open. And even if he'll make a wide open pass, sometimes the wide receiver will have to make an acrobatic catch and he can't keep his balance to create yards after the catch and unfortunately he has not panned out very well i would have loved to see marcus Mariota resurrect his career here in atlanta and become the franchise quarterback that he was supposed to be in tennessee but it just has not happened and unfortunately i was right about that now of course it's not all on him football's a team sport right arthur smith could do a much better job at play calling or the offensive coordinator could do a better job of play calling whoever is calling the plays could do a much better job i still think the offensive line isn't very good even though they have improved in the run blocking department but when it comes to pass blocking they have no chance and this also goes to show that it does not matter how mobile you are if your offensive line cannot protect you you are not going to have success but people think that because a guy who is mobile and shifty that the offensive line doesn't have to be as good as the 2000 New England Patriots offensive lines. You know, they don't really have to do a good job of pass protecting. They can just run away from the defensive ends and the cornerbacks and stuff. No, you have to have a good offensive line. And this offensive line continues to struggle when it comes to pass protecting. So the Falcons have four more games left against the Saints, the Ravens, the Cardinals, and the Buccaneers. Can they still make the playoffs? Yes, because three of these teams are in the NFC. Two of them are in the division, and the division is not very good. Um, do I think they can make the playoffs? I don't really have a whole lot of faith, but I, so I guess no. Um, <laughs> is it time to start Ritter? I would not be upset if they start at Ritter. I was against the whole starting Ritter thing because, you know, at the time, the Falcons were first placed in the division, and they were still close to winning the division, and I thought that if you put in a young rookie quarterback like Ritter, that kind of puts a little bit too much pressure on him to perform. So just go ahead and with the veteran who's been to the playoffs and who's won a playoff game and he knows what it's like to play under that type of pressure so do you start Ritter go ahead why not see what you have because now okay now here's the thing if you start Ritter don't get upset if the Falcons continue to lose or you don't see what you wanted to see all right because you put it in a new quarterback on a bad team or an average team doesn't necessarily mean that that team is going to start winning all right so put in Ritter Try to put him in the mindset of show us why you should be the starter. Show us why you should be the starting quarterback rather than, okay, we still have a chance to make the playoffs, so I need you to play well and and da 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 I think if you tell him that, then you put a bit too much pressure on him rather than tell him to, you know, go out, relax, have fun, prove to us as to why you're the starter. Try to put him in that mindset. I think they should do it that way. Um, but yeah, so those are my thoughts on the Falcons. Do I think that they can make the playoffs? Not really. Do they still have a chance? Sure. Do I think that putting in Ritter will change the dynamic of this team? And I don't think so because the offensive line, once again, isn't very good. But who knows? Maybe they'll surprise me. You know, I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong because I'm a Falcons fan, unfortunately. And um, I am also rambling. So to the people who have been following my little channel and to the people who have been watching my analysis videos for the Falcons, thank you, number one. And number two, if you were wondering where were the Falcon analysis videos. I just had to put a stop to those because outside of YouTube, I have a wife and things were getting pretty busy for me to try and constantly upload a Falcons analysis video each week. So I figured I make Falcon topic videos, talk about the last few games. And also, I don't want to make it seem as if my channel was solely geared towards the Falcons. I do talk about other teams as well. So that's another reason as to why I stopped making the, the analysis videos. So please like and subscribe. That is it. I am out.